Okay. My name is Jason Schlarb, and I am 44 years old. I am a professional trail mountain ultra runner, and I'm also a coach and race director. I started to run as a, a football player, soccer, uh, in the United States, and my father was uh, the coach. And he's a very passionate, intense individual, and that's where I get my passion and my intensity. I wasn't the best football player, but I was really, really good at running back and forth and being everywhere at all times. So I was pretty good at football and amazing at running. So I was uh, the midfield player, and that's, that's where the running started. I burned out in running. I got tired of running. And um, no, not burned out of running. I got burned out of playing soccer, football. And I saw all these guys running cross country and uh, running through the forest and, and through, you know, cool terrain. And it wasn't so much that the running was cool. It was that the, the community and the culture and the, the fun that these guys got to have together playing while running was what really kind of pulled me into the running. Uh, but, you know, the, the actual running wasn't that fun. And so I guess I was running from a pass of, of expectations of, of being a professional, of being a, a collegiate university uh, football player. And that, that kind of pressure was, was difficult and it was challenging. And I, I think I was running from that. And I found that I was a, a, a really good runner and I never would train when I didn't have to. Uh, as soon as uh, university or school was over, I didn't run at all. And I, after many, many years, I finally found that, oh, I actually am passionate about running, and I actually love to do this, and it's really, really fun to see what my body can do. But uh, to, to start, it was running away from expectations, and it was pressure, and it was, uh, you know, even my father's expectations. And then it, that's, that's, that's how it started. And that's what I was running from, I guess. I have, I have profound ideas. I have uh, solutions to problems. I also have, you know, I can also dwell on w people that have uh, wronged me. I, 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 have, I dwell also on, you know, things that I want. And it's my time to, to meditate about that. And there's also periods of my life where I'm not able to en enjoy my running with my headspace because I have too much stress in my life. And, and you know, particularly at the beginning of COVID, uh, you know, I had to listen to music. I had to listen to podcasts. I had to escape while I was escaping. And it, it you know, there's, there's different seasons. There's different times in my life where uh, you know, what I get from running is different. And, um, you know, it, sometimes it's a job, sometimes it's therapy, sometimes it's uh, a way to figure out my life and also celebrate, you know, what's good in my life. So it, it, it really fluctuates and changes all the time. Um, you know, first off, the, the functional clothing and, and functional gear uh, you know, I feel that, um, you know, it's, it's really evolving. When I started running trails uh, and even on the road, you know, it was, it was really road shoes that were very heavy and just changed the color. Um, you know, that was trail running shoes. Uh, gear was basically fanny packs that kind of held water bottles. Um, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of functional stuff at all. And it, it, was, it was very just, just road running and then just going in the mountains with that, that kind of gear. And it, it, was, it was difficult. Um, and, you know, it, was, it, it included, you know, carrying your water bottle in your hand, which still Americans like to do at some races, which is ridiculous. But, you know, it has come a long way to, to wearing vests, to, to also, you know, having belts, um, you know, you know, I've been involved with a project with, with uh, Ultimate Direction to, to create functional clothing and, you know, with a waist belt that's attached to the shorts so that it doesn't, you know, move around, it doesn't twist, it doesn't do all these kind of things. But I can carry my phone, my water bottle, my gels, my nutrition, um, a really beautiful flower that I want to bring back for my girlfriend. You know, that, that's, that's the functional things that I really enjoy having with running. 
But also, you know, I feel that there's, there's developments too of like, you know, lighting and putting lighting in different places like around your waist opposed to on top of your head. Um, you know, there's, there's the functionality too of just having watches that, you know, can tell you when to eat and when to turn left or right and what the terrain is around you and seeing maps on your watch. Uh, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that are really exciting right now uh, with, with functional trail and explorational running. You know, one idea that I really love and, and have is to be able to put water between my shoulder blades because, you know, water is heavy and, you know, a lot of runners are thin and skinny and the bounce is a, is a, is a, is a nuisance. And I believe that water between the shoulder blades is a great spot right behind here because it can almost rest on the neck and the back, but can also be, you know, you can, you can access it. Um, and I, I've, been, I've been working with, uh, you know, uh, some, some brands to do that as well. Um, I, I think that that would, that would be fantastic to be able to have something like that. And then, uh, you know, maybe even like LEDs that are super powerful and the batteries are really, really small. And to be able to have them on your shirt or even on your shorts, I think that that would be fantastic. I also think that, you know, telescoping trekking poles where I, I, f I believe that, you know, we've, we've got the carbon fiber, you know, we figured that out and, you know, even gloves and handles that are really small and light. But I feel that the poles can be compressed and, you know, with maybe like, you know, metal alloys or, or carbon fiber, maybe we can get poles that, you know, can be this big, you know, that you could fit, you know, just anywhere and then just pull it out and be really strong. I feel like that's something that I would love to see like a brand like Lecky or something create. Um, these are just things in the top of my head that, that would be really, really fun. Along with, um, you know, maybe even, you know, uh, some, some shorts, and some, some apparel that could actually protect you when you fall. I feel like that that would be really fun. And downhill descents, you know, maybe some kind of body armor that is still light and fast and comfortable. Uh, I think that that would be really cool. And it's, it's also been a, it's been a, you know, in skiing and, and alpine, uh, uh, you know, uh, exploration, there's also like thermal heating that, you know, when you get cold and you don't want to bring a coat, you know, and it's not cold right now, and it's also heavy, maybe there's, there's ways to, you know, like have, um, you know, solar, you know, batteries that could heat, you know, uh, your shirt and your gloves and your shorts and even maybe your socks, so that if it gets cold, you know, maybe you could have, you know, heating that way as an emergency because you know a lot of a lot of ultra runners and mountain runners you know get harassed about accessing inaccessible places with not enough gear and so maybe that's a way that we could stay safe in the sport as well yes i i've tried some out i've i've run um you know carbotex is a brand that makes uh carbon fiber plates and they've worked with some uh, you know, a, a handful of different brands. And, you know, carbon fiber is, has changed the road running world. And I feel like multiple plates could potentially, you know, come into play with, with uh, trail running. Um, and it, but it's a more difficult equation to, and, and problem to solve because of undulation, you know, and because of uh, the fact that, you know, there's different, just different angles of, of, of the, the foot landing going up and down and also camber this way and that way so it's not as easy to solve with carbon fiber so I believe it'll happen but it, I think it'll happen first in easy trails and flat smooth trails if it already hasn't I think energy return is where the the biggest gains can be made but I haven't really thought about you know the the, the absorbing you know forces as being, because I mean, we, it, it's pretty light, you know, with, with, with foam and EVAs and, and, and things like that. So I don't like plastic. Really? I don't like plastic because 
for a number of different reasons. There, there, you know, it's non-renewable, and we just have too much plastic, and it's causing all kinds of problems. And you, everybody knows this story. But also, I have found that I don't like the greasy plastic feel when I sweat, and I don't like how it feels on my body. And I like natural fibers. And you know, one of my favorite is, is merino. Uh, you know, even this shirt right here has a merino polyester blend that that keeps it feeling nice and comfortable and soft without being stinky, without being greasy, without like, you know, after a month or two of wearing it, kind of like st stinking all the time. Like <laughs> so I like those natural fibers and I am curious what's next for, for material science, for outwear that will be less plastic and more comfortable and good feeling. I do. I do like cotton. I like the feel of it. Um, you know, it's just the matter of kind of that sag. Same thing with merino. So I feel like, you know, blends of cottons are kind of a little bit easier, but it's, it's also a great renewable, you know, resource too. And so it's, it's nice, but I haven't done too much straight cotton running. UTMB has been a goal for a few years for me. Um, you know, being a professional runner for, for 10 years now, you know, I've been on the podium. I've been fourth. I've been the first American. I've been first American again, uh, finishing 19th three years ago. Um, but I had a skiing accident, and I tore my ACL and my meniscus uh, last March, so a year and a half ago. And UTMB has been, for over a year now, the kind of end state, the goal. I'm going to be ready to run like I could before the injury. And also, I want to be as fast or faster than I was when I was younger, you know, when I ran it in 2014, which is now eight years ago. And so this has been the culmination of both getting over injury and then also doing everything I can to be 44 years old and still be in the top 10. You know, that, that has been a goal. And, you know, it's a goal, but it's also been the, the driving force. It's been my purpose. It has been what motivates me. And it's, you know, I have been, been able to accomplish so much, both mentally and emotionally, and then also physically, where I can now be at that level and then also get over something that was very, very difficult. You know, at uh, over 40 and tearing your ACL and being a professional athlete, <laughs> it's a very difficult thing. And so this is truly now, even if I, if I tripped and didn't start and, and broke my leg tomorrow, I have been successful at getting to a level of fitness and confidence and, and building from that of having six weeks where I couldn't even put weight on my leg and had to use crutches to running 200 Ks this summer and uh, being able to train in a way that like I used to when um, you know I won hard rock or run rabbit run three times. So this is, this is now a celebration. This is, this is a special, special treat. And even if I don't make my goal of top 10, I will have won. You know, a couple days ago, Ludovic Pomeray, a French man uh, who's 46 or 47 years old, one TDS, which is one of the three major ultra marathons, I feel like, m even more so than OCC. Um, CCC, TDS, and UTMB are all unbelievably competitive for many years. And Ludovic won by an hour, and he's 46 years old. So I'm motivated by his performance, and I know that I can be in the top 10 if I am smart and I use all the skills and lessons and all the things that I've done along with my natural talent and the ability to be one of the best in the world for over a decade at the Long Mountain Ultra Marathon. And I can put that all together tomorrow and uh, be in the top 10. But who knows? That's why we do it. You know, my, my good friend, uh, the first time I ran UTMB, I was uh, in fourth place with 10 kilometers to go. And right behind me is a Lithuanian guy named Jeremias Grinius. And I could see him. And to, to have somebody that close in a 170 kilometer race is very scary. Uh, that was the beginning of our relationship. 
And I've gone to China twice with him. I've gone to Oman. I've raced uh, in, in, in uh, you know, three different continents with this guy. I've done films with this guy. He is my competition, and he also injured his knee last year. Um, so he is one of my best friends, maybe my best friend in ultra marathon running, and he will be there tomorrow, and he's in good shape. So I will pay attention quite a bit to him. And, you know, besides that, nobody else in the race besides myself matters. I can't control them, and it only brings stress. And I know exactly how to run my race, and so nobody else truly matters. So besides my, my best friend, I, I don't care. The craziest race is, is hard to say because I've had a few crazy races, truly crazy races. And these races were in places in, 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 in that really didn't have too much liability kind of uh, laws and regulations and it was it was races that in Europe or in North America and in a number of other places and countries wouldn't be allowed it was a race it was point to point through the uh, the Chinese uh, mountains near the Himalayas on the, on the Him Himalayan plateau and it went up to you know 5,000 meters and we ran you know I think somewhere around 20k above 4,000 meters. There was snow that fell and it was almost shin deep. And running at that altitude um, was outrageous. And I live at two and a half thousand meters and I have, a, you know, that's, that's very, very high and I'm suited for that. But it was really, really scary. And there was, you know, it was a big race. You know, there was over a few hundred people at the race and they actually, ended up canceling the race after the third finisher because it was snowing and it was absolutely scary and dangerous. I've also run in Oman over 3,000 meter peaks in places that had basically climbing straight up mountains with reflective markers at 70 kilometers into a race. It, it is, the race doesn't happen anymore, but that's not the reason, but it was just almost negligent you know, it was, it was, it was dangerous. It was dangerous. And Ushuaia at the, you know, the southern tip of South America, you know, the, 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 the takeoff point to go see Antarctica, uh, there was a race that went and it was almost knee deep snow. And we were running with uh, warning kind of caution tape from one pole to the next because you couldn't even see. And there was search and rescue people and tents just out there. It, it was a true adventure mountain race with hundreds of people out there. You know, almost, you know, if something happened and you fell, you might be lost and freeze to death. So I've had a, a handful of very, I've, I've gone out of my way to go to these races. They are my favorite kind of races, but um, a lot of them are ridiculous. You know, at this point, my running goal is to keep running and te keep being competitive and being the most competitive for my age as well. Uh, but also, it, it has transformed into giving. I'm now a race director at three different races, uh, Run Beyond Racing uh, in, in Colorado, the Fall Classic in Texas, and another race, Sky, Sky Island, and, and then a race in Colorado in Buena Vista. I also coach over 20 athletes. And that's my way of having relationship and be able to give back all this that I've learned over these, you know, 20 years of running. So that's, that's, that's really special. And that's more of my focus now and my future. My favorite place is, is actually where I live in the San Juan Mountains. And <clears throat> it's my favorite because it's wilderness. It's not developed and there's a lot of wildlife. And it's also very wet and there's beautiful rivers and lakes and big trees. And it's also high, it's at 4,000 meters. And, uh, you know, there's big peaks there, 14,000 foot, yeah, 4,000 meter peaks. And uh, I live at 2,500 meters in, in a cabin. And that's, that's my home, and that's my favorite. Um, there's, there's exotic and sexy trails all over the world, but those are my favorite, and it's my home. I run for myself, and I run for the purpose to 
improve other people's lives. I, I am motivated by the fact that I can influence others to be active, to be athletic, to be healthy, to explore the wild places that is, our world has, um, and to, to not forget that we are wild animals of this planet, that we are not, uh, you know, meant to just hide in, in human-made infrastructure um, and to actually explore and see all that the Earth has.